everyone welcome back to my channel and um, today we are once again doing left versus right um oh you can't even see it here okay I'm nice. okay cool uh i'm so sorry been like a month i think <laughs> because i ended up doing stuff for my other channel so and also, I'm just very busy. <laughs> uh, okay, so... Yeah, as promised, today's episode will be about sh shading with a pencil. I mean, I, I really sharpen this pencil way too much. <laughs> okay, so... um, Actually, I'm thinking of a new thing, but... I have to plan it out and see how it goes. It's completely different from whatever stuff that I've been doing, so uh, stay tuned to it. Okay, so let's get to today's thing, which is shading. So I'm gonna make this quick and not bore everyone. <laughs> I'm like gonna just draw some simple shapes, like a sphere, a cube, or maybe instead of a cube, like a little cupboard kind of thing. And uh, instead of an apple, maybe something a bit more complicated, but we'll look at that later. So first of all, we'll start with the sphere. Since I'm holding it in my right hand, I'm just going to start with that first. It will include everything from the sphere to the shading. So I'm going to do the light source from here. So this is where the light is coming from. Why did I draw it so huge? I don't need such a huge spear to spend a lot of graphite on. Ah, never mind. But actually, you can tell if it's a good pencil just by doing a simple shape test. Like if you just do this, and you can very easily get it to a light shape, then the pencil is pretty good. It's suitable for this. Okay, so I'm so sorry, I drew it a little bit too big. <laughs> I have nothing to say. Oh no. I can I can choose to adjust it a little bit with the eraser because it's quite hard to shade it completely well, just like that. And usually uh, we do blend it in a bit with our finger. But you know what's a blending in? Uh, charcoal. Charcoal is very easy to blend, but that means that you'll keep adding layers and layers and layers until you get tired of yourself, so I don't know, depends. I'm more, I'm more familiar with pencil shading, so yeah. It's, I think one thing that is helpful to do in shading is if you're not exactly sure how dark to make it you first make it lighter than what you want it to be and if you think you need to make it darker then you can add it on because it's easier to add on darkness to a lighter shade than to erase the darker one because once you erase it just doesn't look the same anymore it looks it's just a little bit weird And usually when you shade with a pencil, you get all these lines because, and you can't really avoid it. There's a reason why you're supposed to try to blend it in with your finger or something after you're done shading it. But it's a bit harder to do that on a pencil as compared to, to charcoal because charcoal is very easy to just smudge it and blend it and do everything that you need to do. So, yeah, <laughs> this is extremely boring to watch. I do not know why. I guess you could watch it if you like 
relaxing things. I, sh- I might as well just play some music or something, but I'm too lazy to do that. You can watch it if you want to sleep or something. <laughs> it will probably put you to sleep. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, so I'm not exactly someone who supposedly specializes in shading, but I think I do seem to be somewhat decently good at it, or at least I'm comfortable with it. It's like something that's is my, my thing. <laughs> so yeah, this is the blending part. So you have to press really hard and then blend it in. But once you do it, it removes a lot of the lines, makes it look a little bit nicer. But it doesn't just end with the blending because your blending may not help make it completely, completely, you know, fluid. <laughs> you can see the graphite on my hand. Actually, that's why if you're if you're doing if you're shading a huge piece and you don't want to accidentally smudge out something else, then you should put a piece of paper under your hand where if you're, if, you know, if let's say if this is, like, the shading takes up the entire piece of paper. And at some point of time, you're going to be keeping your hand on the shading area if you need to actually, you know, give some support. But if you lift your hand up most of the time, then it's not really a big issue. And I shouldn't take too much time with this because I need to do it for my left hand as well. So let me just add like a bit more shade darkness here because once I blend it out, it just looks all the same tone at, apart from the from this bottom area here. Okay, so let me just blend this in as well. Actually, this isn't even a proper circle, so... <laughs> Oops. A little bit more graphite here. Because this looks a bit awkwardly like a coin rather than a sphere. So it does, like this area looks way too light. Add a bit more graphite here to, to balance it out. Cause in a way, when you blend it, your hand will also remove some of the graphite. So. It may be a little bit lighter than you expect once you blend it in. So you must always keep adding layers until <laughs> you get the desired result. But you can also choose to not blend. And if you do that, then you can just try to be as accurate as you can with your pencil. So if so another thing that I usually take note of is instead of full on erasing, I just dab it with the eraser. And that will not remove everything, but it will remove a little bit and make it a little bit lighter but while at the same time not making it unnecessarily light. So let me do it a little bit closer to this place here. I mean this will work better with all those you know those moldable erasers but um never mind. I mean I do have one but I don't really want to use that because it's it's too much of a liability much of dust sticks to it yeah so a normal eraser should work too yeah so if I want I can refine this further and the thing it doesn't look half bad except for the part that fact that this doesn't really look like a circle <laughs> so yeah if you erase it as a whole you can erase the outside here yeah I don't want to overwhelmingly try to make this look good because I don't have time. Already like 10 minutes. Great. So now I'm going to try to do the same thing with my left hand. I think I might accidentally smudge this in the process. I'll instead draw it a little bit lower. Over here though. 
Okay, so I'm first gonna draw a sphere. Maybe I'll try to make it a bit smaller. So I don't have to spend like another 10 minutes just trying to draw this. Okay. Yeah, this is my potato. <laughs> it's more like a potato than a spear. So I'll just call it a potato. And since this is my left hand, I might find it more comfortable to do the light here. Okay. Uh, so let's start. I mean, the point isn't about the shape, but more of the shading. So let's see how, how well my left hand can shade. I'm sorry, I'm literally blocking the camp. <laughs> oh man, I don't even know where to start. It's just so weird. Maybe let me first start with a basic shading. I feel like this thing is getting in the way. If I lift it up, there's absolutely no control, as you can see. If I, if I, if I let it sit on the thing, it still has, it doesn't really have enough control. Maybe if I let it do this, if I use only two fingers to hold it. I could, I could probably use that to get a little bit more control. Usually when I hold it, my right hand, I use these three fingers. So Maybe that will help. I don't know. All right, let's let's just try this. Right from the start, I can already see that there's a lot more rough. Like it's a lot more organic looking here. <laughs> oh no. Thing is I can't even use my right hand to help my left hand so this is just painful to say the least. Like not painful for my hand but painful for me to watch. It just looks so uncomfortable to look at. I mean technically you can blend it out so let me try my best to, to do this. But this is how my hand shades. It just draws ovals instead of actually shading. Let me try the, let me try this using two fingers instead. It actually works a lot better than doing the shading thing. I mean, trying to do it the normal way. It works, kind of, although I'm not sure how well I can control the strength of this. But at least it looks a bit less weird. I really do not know what I'm doing at this moment. Like, look at this, what am I doing? I'm like using the, like this part of my finger to shake. Oh my. Okay, we are somewhere, we are getting somewhere. Oh wow. This is a thing. So let me just add a little bit of pencil here. So the only thing that can save this monstrosity is some girl bending. So let me see if I if that will help in any way. Of course there's definitely not enough graphite here for that. So let's see how it goes. Oh man, this requires quite a bit of pressing to get rid of those lines. Those lines are pretty harsh. <laughs> kind of looks like a potato, actually. <laughs> if this was drawing a potato, this would actually be it. <laughs> that one looks like a spear, that one. This one looks like a potato. Okay, cool. At least I know I can draw potatoes in my mind. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't look that bad. If you are thinking that it's a potato, yeah. But if you wanted this to be a spear, then obviously 
it it lacks on so many levels. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, uh, obviously this line is very um it's like very obviously dark, so I need to add a little bit more darkness here to make it blend out a bit more. Back to my three finger thing that doesn't work. Maybe lifting it up will help. I don't know. But I think lifting it up may be the only way to salvage this. Right, literally ruined my entire arm though, so it feels very robotic, <laughs> very mechanical. Also very uncomfortable for my shoulder. <laughs> I'm moving my entire self, just trying to get this to become darker. Mm -hmm. And it may not really. Yeah, instead of moving myself, I'm just gonna move my forearm, I guess. My forearm, I don't know, this part of my head. Okay, I think I made it a little bit darker here. Just try to blend this out a bit. If I really wanted to be bothered, I could try to do more, <laughs> but honestly, after a while, I'll just lose my patience and not want to do this anymore. Actually, I haven't lost my patience yet. That is weird. Okay. But it's not really about losing my patience because it's more of um, you all losing your patience of watching this video. Oh man, it's already like almost 20 minutes, like at least 3 minutes to 20 minutes, I guess. Uh, yeah, should I continue? I think this isn't that bad if you wanted to call this a potato, I, I think this would pass. <laughs> Let's move on. Uh, yeah, there is a difference between <laughs> the spear and the potato. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Let's move on to the um, the next thing which would be the cupboard. Okay, so, so first I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna use a ruler, so whatever. To give a fair chance, I'm not gonna use a ruler. Or is that really a fair chance? I don't know. Anyways, so this is a cube, right? So if you were to use this, But if you wanted to make this into a cupboard, uh, instead of drawing it, I think the cupboard would be going in this way. So we're gonna pretend that this is like it's not like a real cupboard, more of you like inverted cube kind of a thing. So we're gonna, we're gonna do an inverted cube, and the inside part here will be like the light will be shining this way, it will shine inside this way. Okay, I know this has nothing to do with the circle, so uh, the light will shine in from this direction over here, kind of. Like, downwards, kind of. I don't know. Or will it? I don't know. Or maybe just parallel to this. So this part will still be pretty dark, but the rest of it may not be so dark. Actually, when my hand is shading, this is how I hold it. I, 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 my right hand itself shades weirdly. So you can only expect my left hand to shade weirdly too. Or at least holding the pencil weirdly and shading. So I'm just gonna make this part really dark. Right, this area will get more darker, and this area will also get more lighter. But not that much lighter. Yeah, 
this this is the kind of color this will end here it's this will end at i guess okay so then this part will be So this is the part that will actually be lighter. So let's imagine it like a circle that goes this way. Um, so this this part will be the lightest part here. And therefore this area will be about this this particular level of shading. And from there we have to go lighter and lighter. This part may be still pretty dark because it's far away from the light source, I guess. <laughs> so I'm just gonna do a random random shading in this direction because that's the easiest way to do this quickly. Okay, and likewise I can just continue from this from this side here. So if you're imagining the light to be hitting here around here, then this part could be still pretty dark in a way. And then once it reaches, like very quickly goes to a lighter color around here. Yeah, something like that. So let's just do a preliminary blending in first so that we can refine this later on. Okay, so as you can see, this is what it looks like at the moment. I'm just going to draw in the lines a little bit darker, so it's a bit easier for you to tell what exactly this is. Of course, um, uh, it doesn't really look like that in a real life coverage. You would probably not be able to tell the lines that clearly. So this part will still be pretty dark actually, if I think about it. So I can make this part as dark as I can get it to be. And then blend this part in together. Make a little bit lighter shape here. This part can be a little bit darker again. To be honest, it's quite hard to think of it. If you just draw a shape and then you put a light source artificially, and you try to figure out how the light will, will interact with the object. If, if let's say you're copying from a pre-existing picture, you just make it black and white, it's going to be a lot easier to copy that and uh, replicate the shades and highlights of that picture. So that will, that will look a lot better than this I, in a way. But this is actually a pretty good way to get yourself to think and like, you know, okay, where's the light going to fall? Maybe, maybe I should think about it more properly, like us in a scientific way or something. I don't know. Oh wow, I really did that hard. The shading pit, I did a little bit too hard. Like the blending pit.
just miss another fingertip. Yeah. You know, mild it down. Sometimes one of your fingers will have way too much graphite and then it ends up depositing all of it somewhere where you didn't want it to be. And when that happens, you can either use an eraser or you can use a clean finger to remove it off or make it a little bit milder. Okay. I don't know if this is what I was going for, but I think it looks pretty okay. It has a weird look to it. I think looking at it from the camera would be a, give a better idea of whether I, I did it properly. I feel like this area isn't completely gradiented. In a sense, it's just suddenly a really dark shade at the top, and then it suddenly becomes really light at the bottom. Let me add a little bit more and not blend it too much because I needed that part to be a bit darker. Okay. Uh, I think this should be okay for now. <laughs> Okay, so as usual, just erase anything extra that's outside to get a bit more cleaner image. Maybe if you want to make the lines straight, you can use an eraser. That might actually help. But be careful not to actually erase what's inside. Okay. Okay, so... Yeah, let's just end this with doing this particular thing on my left hand. Um, maybe I should just edit the video and make it faster. Oh no. Yeah, I'm just gonna do this on with my left hand. I already have a headache. Great. Perfect. To make my life easier, I'm just gonna make it a bit smaller. I'm just gonna draw a square. and then I'm just going to draw it in this way. Okay, cool. I'm just going to do this exact same thing in the opposite direction uh, with, with my left hand.
um, this is even more uncomfortable. <laughs> smart control at all. can see well this is just pretty messy <laughs> but I guess it's okay is it I don't know trying to just compare this to the other one and I guess it's somewhat okay because I know where to shape how much but at the same time it doesn't look nice how does it I don't know I can't even think about it right now I guess this is where we'll end this. We'll just clean this up and get it in later. Yeah. Uh, 
I guess we will end this here because honestly there's only so much I can really do this. I mean I did say I will do something a more complicated but seeing that I already have trouble with this, doing something more complicated is going to take even more trouble. Like, I imagine if it's on face. And you know, actually this isn't a realistic face, so it's okay. This looks like some mask or something. <laughs> but anyways, um let's say if I was trying to do something more complicated than this, it would it requires a bit more control. And well it does seem that I tend to have more control with my right hand because as you can see, um unlike many other things drawing and writing are somewhat learned skills, so it, it does require practice to be able to control using the pencil. Like even if you hold it weirdly, at least if you're able to control the movements and instead of like anyhow, you know, <laughs> like you know what I mean, right? So in a way, um, it, it kind of explains why my left hand drawings look kind of like potatoes and I don't know what this is. I mean this one doesn't look so bad. It just looks like a or very organic version of the original thing. So if you wanted to make something look more organic, I guess you could use your other hand. Um, at the same time, I guess the fact that I can even do this with my left hand is not so... It's, it's not to be understated, I guess. So yeah, cool. Um, so that's what we learned today. <laughs> yeah, and also the fact that I can't really draw perfect circles anyway, so yeah. Uh, so, the, so the main thing of today is if you want to draw potatoes, use your other hand. <laughs> yeah, if you want to draw like a nice, very technical looking thing, then use your dominant or the more practiced hand in the sense while if you have something more organic and you don't mind making it look very organic you know if you want to give a bit more natural texture to it then you can use your other hand for a change and see how it turns out and then maybe make changes with the hand that you usually use to draw these things i'm not sure if that's a very helpful way to end but anyway since I wasted enough time already. Let's um let's get let's stop baby diving and uh, for now I'll say thank you and bye. Uh if you found this video enjoyable to watch or or something, I don't know. You can press the like button and subscribe and yeah. Um that's it. Okay, bye. <laughs>